Hey everybody, I wanna take a quick second before we get started to thank the sponsor of today's video, Opera Browser. Opera Browser is loaded with features that add to your privacy, security, and everything you do online. And the best part is it now has a completely redesigned look and new functionality like tab islands and a sleek modular design that adapts to your browsing. One feature that's been totally revamped that I like a lot is Lucid Mode. Lucid Mode sharpens the videos you watch online with one click. It's easy to use too, just hover over any video and click the Lucid Mode button to watch it work its magic. You can now change the sharpness levels of Lucid Mode in the settings and also check the before and after directly on the video thanks to the slider. Another really cool feature from Opera Browser is Tab Islands. Tab Islands are fully customizable clusters of tabs designed to allow you to keep similar tabs together. You can also drag and drop tabs between islands and manage entire groups at once. It really does make a big difference when you have massive amounts of tabs open and you don't want to lose them. Opera Browser also has a native browser AI called Aria. Aria is baked into Opera Browser so you can easily access it from the sidebar and it gives you clear answers instantly. The best part about Aria is it's connected to the the internet so it gives you real-time information and it can generate content based on your ideas in just a few clicks. I found that Aria is particularly good at summarizing complicated legal concepts into everyday language that even a simpleton like me can understand. In just a few seconds, Aria accurately explained the concept of common law marriage in Texas to me for this video. That's called foreshadowing. So make sure to use my link in the description to download Opera Browser today and check out some of the cool features. It really does help the channel out. Thanks again to Opera for sponsoring this video. Now let's get right back into the story. When you watch a streamer, it's probably because they're either really good at video games or they're funny. I think there was a third reason too, but I forgot what it was. Something about hot tubs and body painting. I don't know what it is. But sometimes it feels like there's something more there. You start to feel like you really know the streamer and like them as a person. Unfortunately, the only thing more shocking than falling into a parasocial relationship with a streamer is being snapped back out of it by the harsh cookie of reality. I know, I know math is hard when you're an idiot, but... Uh... If you're a broke boy, just say so. But there's one streamer relationship that transcends the parasocial. XQC and Adept's relationship has been live streamed from the very beginning. The quality must be terrible. Can you check it? Why are you guys saying fine cap? <laughs> it's not a cap. <laughs> it's not cap at all. Fine cap. <laughs> XQC's transformation from an upstart Overwatch pro player with 100 viewers on Twitch to a titan of the streaming industry signing a $100 million deal is a story for the ages. But but it's overshadowed by a story of trust and love that turned into a high stakes game of lies, deceit, and betrayal. You are not a victim okay, here. I'm, you have never not, been a victim okay, here. Okay, I'm done speaking okay, with you. I'm done you as well. not Things were bad privately, publicly, career wise, and I just didn't know what to do. And a lot of evil was shown, and a lot of terrible things were said and done. I sat there and I was asked that question multiple times Do you want peace or do you want justice? And over and over again, I answered, I want peace. Now, where I'm at, I was asked, do you want peace or justice? I said, I want justice. I want justice now. It's December of 2017. The setting is the Blizzard Arena in Burbank, California. The air is filled with the buzz of excited anticipation and gamer body odor as the arena is full of Overwatch players. But they're not here for some casual games of Overwatch, no. They're wearing fancy jerseys with cities' names on them. Names like Dallas Fuel, Houston Outlaws, and Seoul Dynasty. These players are here today to play preseason exhibition matches for the brand new Overwatch League. See, Blizzard wants to try to legitimize esports by building teams that are tied to individual cities, just like the NFL. And Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick believes that he could make NFL and NBA size money if he just copies their business model a little bit and then sprinkles some gamer dust on top. It's probably just Doritos nacho cheese flavor. And to his credit, 12 teams have already signed up for the first season, each agreeing to pay Blizzard a $20 million franchise fee for a total of $240 million. That's a lot of loot boxes. They opened my boxes! My 1,256 boxes! I was collecting those bitch! One of the players in the arena today is Felix Langell, known online as XQC. Just one month before, Felix had won the 2017 Overwatch World Cup MVP award while competing for his home country of Canada. Now, he's been added as a last minute addition to fill the final spot on the Dallas Fuel. The Overwatch League is reportedly paying the players a league minimum of $50,000 so they don't have to stream and focus on playing at a professional level. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
Are you serious? And so, to supplement his income and just because he loved doing it, Felix had been streaming Overwatch on Twitch. Bang, bang, bang! Oh, fuck! I'm on open mic again! Fuck! At the beginning of 2017, he was averaging 150 to 300 viewers. But by the end of the year, he was pulling in well over 5,000 viewers on a regular basis. And it was because of this fast growth in popularity that he was recognized by someone in the stands that day, a woman named Sammy. Sammy also played Overwatch competitively and had been dabbling in content creation, going by the name Adept online. Hey, I know you. Aren't you XQC? Um, oh, wait, you're wondering uh, who is actually the most decorated worldwide gamer, international stage winner, T-Mobile MVP, Jew Sir Warlord, most handsome motherfucker, what's up? That's me, man. Wow, that's amazing. Good luck. XQC had a job in the Overwatch League because he played at a professional level, but he had a growing following on Twitch because of just how unprofessional he could be. Felix was temporarily banned from Overwatch just a few weeks later for throwing games. But a lot of Felix's fans said he was a victim of match throwing himself. Stream snipers consistently joined XQC's team and did everything they could to lose the match just to get a reaction out of him. Trolling XQC became a common theme amongst his audience with half of them there to cheer on their favorite Overwatch player and esports athlete and the other half trying to make him so mad that he would fart and smash his desk again. Just a few weeks after meeting Sammy for the first time, Felix would see her again at a New Year's Eve party in Los Angeles. And it was most obnoxious music and people that I've, that I've ever come across and I just realized that that's just how LA is, um, just really, really just trashy clubs and people. Felix had recently moved from Canada to LA to play Overwatch on a work visa. For most people, moving to a new city and a new country where you don't really know anyone would be a pretty difficult social situation. But Felix didn't seem to have a hard time meeting girls. I didn't want to date Felix at all at first. When me and him met New Year's, he was with some Felix, other girl. You really messed up so not remembering. Like, why would why would I want to be with this guy? Like he's a player. Like he could go. You know. Like I'm not gonna be one of his hoes. He could go. F a billion other girls, like I'm not gonna give it any of my attention, right? In January, the regular season began, and Felix was regularly playing Overwatch in an arena full of screaming fans with TV-level broadcasts and casters. Fuel's third official matchup of the season was against the Houston Outlaws on January 18th. Felix didn't play in the match, but his unique personality and unintelligible trash talking had gotten the attention of his opponents, leading Houston Outlaws player Muma to use X's own catchphrase against him after beating the Fuel. In the Wise words of a good friend of mine, rolled and smoked my doggies. <laughs> Felix responded on stream with about as much accuracy as a Winston man could be expected to. Shut your fucking mouth, go back there, suck a fat cock. I mean, he would like it, but. Love you. XQC's response was not received well, especially since Mumo was one of the only openly gay players in the league at the time. The league acted quickly, releasing a statement the next day saying that XQC would be fined $2,000 and suspended four matches for his comments. Felix's team extended the suspension to the rest of stage one. Once reinstated, Felix would go to practice with his team for eight hours. Then since he didn't drive, he would usually walk or run home to his apartment and stream for nine, 10, sometimes 11 hours. And the stream was growing. Huge host! Bogs and shot! Yo! Pogus and Moving Jet, my new teammate! By March, Felix was reinstated and returned to competitive play. But almost as soon as he came back, he got himself into hot water again. While commentator Malik Forte was hosting an Overwatch event on stream, XQC went into the chat and started spamming TryHard7. The league was not pleased, saying that he had used it in a racially disparaging manner. Felix's fans claimed that he used TryHard7 all the time, and it was just something he typed no matter who was on the screen. And there is proof of him typing this in chat going back weeks before this incident. The league was not convinced and find him $4,000 anyway. Dallas Fuel's response was much more severe. But hope you can find something that makes you happy. Get the juice poggers. Three months into his first season in the Overwatch League, Felix had already lost his job. Now, he had a big choice to make. He could either give up on Overwatch, move back home and try to get a normal job, or he could lean in, gamble everything, and try to become a full-time streamer. You can probably guess what he did. But being a full-time streamer in LA wasn't just snorting Coca-Cola and smashing his own furniture. On multiple occasions, XQC got so loud that his neighbors threatened to call the police on him. Then on May 16th, he heard a loud knock on his door. Is Hello? I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. Hello? Hang on. Yes. What? Hands up, hands up. Alright. Like this? Just, 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 okay. 
Shit, I think I just got fucking swatted. Swat, but did, did was it swatted or noise complaint? Cause you're in an apartment, dude. Yeah, it, no, it, it was it was swat 100. It was it wasn't like noise complaint. Oh yikes, dude! Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm just like telling you, dude. That that three guns at me. What the. F XQC's fans had escalated from trying to get a reaction out of him in Overwatch to trying to get him arrested on stream. Then on May 27th, it happened again. Look, look at all these people talking. This time, Felix said it was his upstairs neighbors calling in a noise complaint on him. Understandably, he didn't feel safe staying there that night and texted his new friend Sammy to come pick him up. The two had been spending more time together recently and she was happy to help out. Soon, they began streaming together. Okay, listen boys, listen boys. Let's not <laughs> I was playing tryhards in there. Felix continued to be worried about his safety as packages were going missing at his apartment and he was filled with dread waiting for the police to come raid him again. In the beginning of July, Felix informed his chat that he would be moving in with Adept, but that they were just roommates. And so began the roommate arc on XQC's stream, leading to some of the most wholesome and entertaining content on all of Twitch. Who is in a relationship? I love you too. Romantic face. Romantic face. Romantic face. Shut the f up. What the f a cock lord, dude. In November, Felix went back to Canada to spend the winter with his family. Adept came too, since Felix had met her parents, it only seemed fair that she met his. All roommates do that, right? By this point, XQC's stream was exploding, averaging 15 to 20,000 viewers who would show up to watch him stream for 11 to 12 hours a day. But Overwatch still had a place in Felix's caffeine-drenched heart, and playing in pro or semi-pro esports gave him something that just being a variety streamer couldn't. An opportunity to compete at the highest levels and prove that he was one of the best Overwatch players alive. So when the LA Gladiators offered him a spot on their contenders team, Felix was quick to accept. After a short time in LA, Felix and Adept would move to yet another new place, Austin, Texas. By early 2019, Austin was becoming the hub for Twitch streamers. With names like Asmongold, Mizkif, Greek God X, and many more living there, XQC fit right in. He had just hit a million followers on Twitch and was consistently in the top three most watched streamers on the whole site by this point. XQC and Adept moved in with popular Austin streamer Soto Pop. Within 24 hours of moving into Soda's house, Felix proved just how great of a roommate he was going to be. Guys, I can't find it. I can't find the cat. It, I think I let it out. What? While Felix's Twitch career was soaring to new heights, his days of pro and semi-pro Overwatch were tanking. Felix had been selected to represent his home team of Canada again in the Overwatch World Cup. But when the team entered the playoffs in November, they went 0-4 and, and finished in last place. The next month, Felix would receive some disappointing news from his team, the LA Gladiators, while on stream. As such, we will be parting ways with our players and staff and thanking them for a contribution to our last two years. What does that mean? That I, does that mean that I lose my job? <laughs> Did I just get fired? Okay. That turned out to be the last straw for Felix's competitive Overwatch career. He hung up his jersey for the last time, and now his transformation to pure full-time streamer was complete. In a lot of ways, being a full-time streamer is a great gig, and XQC was loving it. He could get up in the morning, start his stream, react to some videos, play some Fall Guys, and for a little while, it was peaceful. Sure, he had gotten some minor temporary bans from Twitch for stuff like showing up certain gorilla clip or whale watching in vr chat i have to choose <laughs> the big whale at the back big whale no no, no, no. <laughs> but for the most part felix had stayed away from major streaming drama so far but in early 2020 there was an event that made everyone's lives just a little bit more complicated around the world the pandemic to get some more room to spread out and probably to be around fewer people during the height of COVID, Felix bought his own house in Austin, and he and Sammy moved out of Soto Poppin's house in April. X tweeted that he loved being in his own place now. He could argue with himself out loud and even yell at himself without anyone blinking an eye. Felix even attempted cooking for himself for the first time and nearly burnt his brand new house down and burnt himself in the process. Within two weeks, he had transformed the place from a brand new property into an episode of Hoarders. In August, Felix traveled to Canada to stay with his family for a while, and it came to stay too. Since pretty much every venue and event in the world was shut down and canceled that summer, it was a good time to spend with family and learn new skills, like how to tie a tie. Help me do this. Come on. I don't know how to do these. I've never done one. You're looking wonderful today. Sure. How are you, how you feeling? Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. We've been doing great today. We've been uh, 
Perform really well too. By the spring of 2021, Felix and Sammy had been just roommates for nearly three years and had moved back to the Texas house. But now clips were coming out that suggested that maybe they were more than just roommates. And it was pretty widely known that they were together. In probably the most obvious announcement of all time, Sammy tweeted, what if I told you we were never just roommates? Revealing that their first real date was way back in June of 2018 during the scuffed LA Zoo stream. But almost as soon as they moved back to Texas, Felix and Sammy's lives would become a living nightmare. We we were getting raided by uh, the police station uh, at rates that made absolutely no sense. Uh, almost every day, uh, the uh, the police came to our house uh, with a full squad because of you know idiots. And I was generally I was generally scared that I was going to die. Felix's Texas address had been leaked, and him and Sammy were being held at gunpoint so often that one wrong move could mean the end. They tried to reason with the local police department, telling them that the calls were coming from trolls online, but it didn't help. Understanding that acknowledging the swatters would just embolden them, Felix and Sammy came up with a cover story, saying that they were going to temporarily move out of the house because they were having some renovations done. While Felix's gamer den probably did need new carpet once a week, to keep from growing new species of fungus, fans were completely in the dark about the swattings when they moved back in with their old friend Soda Poppin. This was a unique point in Felix's streaming career too. The first half of 2021, Twitch had been taken over by the gambling meta, with everyone from small streamers to the gaming golem himself getting sucked into the allure of hitting that spin button. $19,000. But gambling wasn't just big wins for Felix. His fan base revolted, mostly because other streamers were taking special deals with shady offshore casinos to gamble on stream. The streamer would gamble with the house's money, sometimes allegedly with the scales tipped in their favor, so viewers would see them win a lot of money. The streamer would then get paid, but any winnings they made on stream went back to the casino. It wasn't their money in the first place. Keep in mind at this time, there was a huge variety of deals out there. Not everyone streaming gambling at the time was explicitly misleading their audience. But XQC didn't take the sponsored route at first. He gambled raw, using his own money with no sponsorship deal. But after the backlash from his fans for gambling, he decided to take a sponsored deal since in his mind, he was taking the heat anyway, so why not get the bag too? After a couple months of this, Felix admitted in his offline chat that he had become addicted and said he would stop. But that didn't last long at all. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Off stream, things just continued to get worse. Some 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 person went to my old house and broke into it with like a crowbar and Apparently, he was like looking for me. This had gone far beyond someone far away calling the police and lying to them to get XQC swatted. This was something else entirely. To make the situation even stranger, Felix says he checked all of his DMs and messages afterwards to see if the person had messaged him, but he couldn't find anything. After Felix and Sammy moved to Soda Poppin's house, Felix says weird things started to happen there too. He started to worry that if Soda's house started getting swatted too, someone might get hurt or Soda's dogs might even be in danger. The problem that I have, it's not really for me, it's like for the people around me or whatever. Just me being around people like endangers them. I just want to put, I, I want to like put an end to it because um, it's just kind of like unfair for others. Felix would later say that he thought his address got leaked because of his online gambling. See, when you sign up for these offshore casinos, you often have to send them proof of your address. So maybe somebody along the pipeline saw his address, thought, ooh, big streamer's address, I'm gonna leak it, and then the swatting started. After just a short time at Soda's house, Felix went back to Canada to stay with his parents. Maybe if he could just be with his family, he could finally be safe. And at first, it seemed like he was. After taking a short break from streaming and setting up his gaming PC in Canada, fans said he was looking better than ever. But before long, the trolls who had been swatting Felix got his parents' address too. But the Canadian police treated the situation a bit differently than the Texas police. They, uh, after the first uh, big ass raid, they, um, they would give us like a heads up and they would like clear the house, whatever. And I, I found a way to remain on stream and not say anything at all. And nobody ever noticed anything different. And the stream always kept going. Uh, every time it happened, um, they opened the doors. Uh, I gave a visual signal and they cleared the rooms and they cleared uh, all the angles in the room. Make sure nobody was hidden or nobody was hurt or harmed so they could uh, finish uh, the, the, the house or whatever. Excuse and me. nobody ever noticed. Uh, it happened uh, a crazy amount of times. It's, uh, I, I, can't, I, can't, I don't even know how many times it happened. Back on Twitch, the days of Grand Theft Auto roleplay were at their peak. Some of them, yeah. Wicked. That's, there, are, there are kids and families. Are you okay? I'm not related to any children. Okay. Wicked! Oh 
my! But GTA wasn't all fun and games for Felix. Before long, he started to get into arguments in game with Adept that seemed like they were a little more than role playing. Now, I admitted to you the other day that in character I was molding, and then out of character, I. Don't go there with all of that. Okay, but. Do you want to end so that we can have the talk that you asked me for or not? Okay. Adept ended her stream on at least one occasion due to her and XQC fighting both in and out of game. By August, things had reached a breaking point. What's time you left? Listen, I won't talk about that much, man. It means I've gone into a little bit of a fight. It is what it is, man. Hey, it is what it is. Felix explained a little more on Twitter and asked fans not to harass Sammy. After over three years together, moving to different cities, states, and countries together, enduring countless swattings, and being the one person the other could confide in, it looked like the saga of Felix and Sammy might have reached its ultimate conclusion. 2021 was an intense time in the life of XQC's streaming career. He would stream for 10, 11, 12 hours at a time just about every single day. Sometimes he wouldn't sleep and just streamed for 20 hours. A lot of people look at streamers and think, that's easy, I could play Grand Theft Auto for 20 hours straight and make a ton of money, that would be awesome. And it probably would be for them until they realize to hold a viewer's attention for that long, you actually have to be entertaining. When you're streaming for 12 hours a day every day with no days off, you're not answering text messages, you're too busy reading chat, you're not answering phone calls, you're in Discord with other streamers. You're probably not taking a lunch break either. You're having some fast food door dash to you and then throwing the trash on the floor when you're done rebroadcasting a YouTube video that you're going to immediately pay an editor to re upload to make money off your reaction. 2021, a new craze took over Twitch in the form of. I guess the theater's intro was pretty good, guys. Um, Guys, I really enjoyed the intro. What games are we playing today, boys? But I digress. The point is, being a streamer isn't actually a great job. In fact, I would argue it's a terrible one. There's no healthcare, there's no paid days off, and it really strains your relationships with other people in the real world because streamers like this don't really live in the real world. They live in the stream. And all of this was starting to affect Felix's health and relationships in a big way. He told his chat he was having trouble sleeping, having night terrors. He missed in real life events like Pokimane's podcast because he overslept. And some people were starting to worry that Felix was truly addicted to gambling. Halfway through the year, he had already wagered over $29 million. And these numbers aren't dollars. They're the number of spins. Five reasons to not quit your gambling addiction. Number five, 99% of gambling addicts quit gambling right before they hit the jackpot. Felix told his chat multiple times that he was going to stop gambling and then would almost immediately go back to it. By the end of the summer after the breakup, things looked like they were going to just keep getting worse. After the breakup was made public, Adept tweeted that she lived with a clear conscience knowing the truth about who she is and what she's experienced. Some fans reading too far into this took it to mean that XQC had abused her. Adept clarified the next day that that didn't happen, and that she was only trying to salvage any privacy she had left. It appeared that both Felix and Sammy wanted this to be a clear break without fans harassing either one of them. But within just a few weeks, Adept was spotted in the background of some of XQC's streams. In early September, Felix posted this picture of the two of them together. It looked like they had smoothed things over and had moved back in together. September 2021 was a particularly big month on Twitch because a massive IRL streamer event was coming up, Shit Camp. Planned by streamer QT Cinderella, the plan was to get all of the biggest creators on Twitch together for a summer camp meets game show slumber party. Imagine the smell. Adept and Felix attended this event as a couple, and it seemed like things were back to normal. More clips came out of them arguing, and there were rumors that they had broken up again in November. The stable relationship was devolving into an on-again, off-again mess. The only thing with any stability in XQC's life was his streaming schedule, and that was making him an extreme amount of money. The sponsorships he was taking at the time were worth six figures, and he had enough Twitch subs and ad revenue to be making enough money to make a trip to space every month. Hell yes. <laughs> Instead, he bought a car. But not just any car, a $300,000 McLaren 720S Spider. Felix said it occurred to him that he had finally made it, and buying the McLaren was a symbol of that. From eating cup noodles in a dirty apartment in LA to eating cup noodles in a dirty house in LA and buying a cool car on a whim because he liked the fast cars in Grand Theft Auto. The discerning viewer will notice that Chat's immediate reaction to this announcement was to make fun of him for not being able to drive. He still did not have a driver's license, and Sammy usually drove him around in the Tesla he had bought. In December, they went to pick up the McLaren. X posted a picture with the cap where it all began, the Overwatch League days. Sammy was there too, and posted a picture of X saying, damn, whose boyfriend is this? Sheesh. I'm not sure if she was flexing or genuinely asking, because I'm pretty sure they had broken up and gotten back together at least three times by this point. But things seemed good now, with Adept waxing nostalgic that they had returned to the arena where they met exactly four years later. But even with Adept by his side, the night terrors continued to get worse for Felix. Like that, at some point in our lives. somebody's <laughs> personality traits. <laughs> 
it measures all of and so oh my god the constant swattings they had endured with police breaking in and pointing guns at them and people breaking into the texas house looking for felix had taken a serious toll on his psyche things were starting to get very dark let's gather around at shake camp and sing our shit camp song September 2022. Shit camp was set to be bigger and better than ever. XQC was going to be one of the main attractions, with streamer Ludwig building a set for a game show that XQC would host. But just one day before the event, XQC told his chat that he wasn't going. And watching that clip was how QT Cinderella found out. X hadn't told any of the organizers that he wouldn't be there. People online immediately attributed this to Felix's apparent gambling addiction. Maybe if QT had put a slot machine, he would have showed up. Random LSF commenters weren't the only ones coming to the same conclusion. Felix, if you want to go into drama, let's talk about how you ditched the Creator Clash at the last minute to go gamble and buy yourself. When the Creator Clash was for charity and they were all relying on you, had to change the name and everyone that was going because you ditched to go gamble. By the 16th, the pressure got to Felix and he decided it was time to offer an alternative explanation. I kind of, I, I was cornered into choosing between um, family and Sammy. And unfortunately what happened is that um, I, I kind of just chose family. He went on to say that this breakup was different than the others, there was no arguing, no fighting, but something had happened between Felix's brother, his brother's girlfriend, and Sammy. Whatever this was turned out to be the last straw, and Felix and Sammy agreed it was time to end things for good this time. But Sammy was not happy that Felix had made this breakup public, because when you have 100,000 people that tune into your stream every day, a few of them are going to go over to a depth stream after this and call her a whale, even if XQC asked them not to. That same day, Felix tried to call her and explain himself. It did not go well. You knew that I've always wanted when things are moving on to move on. You know how I am, okay? I don't, I don't cut it halfway. I have to go all the way. I don't have any things above my head all fucking day. I can't do this with you anymore. You are not a victim okay, here. I'm, you have never not, been a victim okay, here. Okay, I'm done speaking okay, with you. I'm you are well. not a victim. It's, it's okay. Stop okay, victimizing okay, okay, yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. I, this got too heavy. I'm sorry. Bye. Jesus. Despite XQC's stream turning into Jerry Springer for Zoomers, Felix's fans still had his back for the most part, with one saying, I really hope that this doesn't make his sleep issues worse. Sammy was there for him quite a bit, so I hope he doesn't spiral out. At first, it seemed like that was the end of it. But in early November, Adept started dropping hints that there was much, much more going on behind the scenes. What? So how does a, how does a vehicle registration work? How does vehicle registration work? You've never bought a car in your life. How does vehicle registration work? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. There are adults in the chat telling you the answers that you need to know right there. Just a couple weeks later, Adept posted this image on her Instagram story. Either she had just become the most overpaid florist of all time and was making a delivery, or she was using Felix's McLaren to go on dates. And the date definitely wasn't with him since he was playing GTA at the time and reacted to this picture live on stream. Whoa! Just a couple months later in January 2023, something would happen on XQC stream that would live in internet history forever. Yeah, $10 promise, $2. Chat, we forgot. Oh my god, we forgot. This clip immediately blew up on Reddit, with one thread getting nearly 11,000 upvotes and thousands of comments speculating on what was going on. People cleaned up the audio and posted versions of their own subtitles and transcripts. This clip was already in the lead for the most parasocial moment of 2023, and the year was only a week old. But to these people's credit, this whole saga had been broadcast live for months. Why stop watching the show when it's heating up to new levels of crazy? The most interesting part of this was that Adept had mentioned a court order, and if there really was a court order, that meant that they had gone to court against each other at some point. Why would they do that? Within a couple of hours, people online had found public court records showing that Adept had filed something against XQC. She even had a restraining order against him. The most bizarre thing was, this filing was a request for a divorce. Filed the same day, Adept posted the picture of the flowers in the McLaren. Had they been secretly married this whole time? I am not married. I was never married. Is a restraining order, in the grand scheme of things, is it not always what you think it is, okay? In, 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 a, in a case like that, it's extremely common that it comes with it. 
Within a day, big YouTubers and streamers were all talking about this divorce case. Destiny pulled the public court records and started going through them on stream. It turned out that Felix and Sammy had never been formally married, but Sammy was claiming that they had been common law married. Common law marriage is something that eight states in the United States have. And in Texas, where Adept and XQC live together, the couple has to agree to be married, live together in Texas as husband and wife, and represent to others that they were married. What Adept is trying to do is she's trying to make the argument that her and XQC probably met the requirements or should have met the requirements for common law marriage. Marriage. So she's trying to file for a divorce now because when she gets divorced from XQC, she's going to be entitled to some sum of his assets that were accumulated during the duration of the marriage. That's what she's trying to do. Gold digging. Unironically. It became immediately clear that the stakes for this divorce case were immensely high. The house, the cars, the millions of dollars in crypto and other assets were all at stake. Because people don't know this is the biggest common law marriage case the world has ever seen and only I got the court documents for now. This is where a YouTuber called Henry Resilient comes in. If it weren't for Henry, most of the details about this case would be unknown to the public. He's a former investigator who got legal, legitimate copies of the court proceedings between XQC and Adept. And he's consistently been one of the first people to break news on this story. A link to Henry's channel is in the description right below the contractually obligated bit. Sorry, Henry, I gotta pay bills too. But make sure you guys hit subscribe, show him some love because I got the very special opportunity to interview him for this video. So why did you hit me up, Jabroni? As soon as I started researching this, like you just kept popping up over and over and over. I'm like, okay, this is the subject matter expert. So I got to talk to the subject matter expert, right? And, and honestly, like stepping back, looking at the whole timeline, this case is crazy. Like I, I, it's I, nuts. I've been trying to tell people this is the biggest common law divorce, craziest case known to man and for the likes of me, no one will cover it. In January, right when this news broke, Henry showed the affidavit where Adept asked for a temporary restraining order. Adept said she had been harassed and is afraid of further harassment, and therefore asks the court to issue a restraining order to bar XQC from speaking about the litigation until a full hearing can be held. She also told the court that they had been married since August of 2020. During that visit to see XQC in Canada, she had told immigration authorities that they were married because Canada wasn't allowing visitors into the country who were unmarried. She also says they've been living together in Texas since then and have presented themselves as married to friends and family. She also says that fans started doxing, harassing, and swatting them after they made their relationship public. In Henry's analysis of this affidavit, he asserts that Adept included this information in the lawsuit so she can sue him for money to cover the cost of armed security, therapy, and any other costs that could be associated with this. She even takes it a step further and tells the judge that she expects Felix to dox her and encourage his fans to harass and possibly physically harm her and her family. The temporary restraining order was granted after this was filed filed, and XQC wasn't allowed to discuss any of this on stream. Adept had gone on to file an amended motion where she requests that Felix pay her attorney fees, give her sole possession of XQC's BMW and Tesla, prevent XQC from using the McLaren, prevent him from gambling, buying or wearing expensive clothes, and she asks the court to take half a million dollars from him and give it to her if he violates the temporary restraining order. Stop having fun. Stop having fun this instant! Not long after, Adept and her lawyers filed a list of violations with the court, claiming that XQC had broken the restraining order and should be made to pay up. There's just one problem with this list of violations. It's chock full of lies. She tells the judge in this document that XQC leaked Destiny the court documents when Destiny had actually gotten them legally as they were public documents. She also says that XQC streamed their argument on the 7th without her knowledge or consent. I'm pretty sure she just blatantly lied in that first list of violations, like... <laughs> She's, no way! Yes. And I know lie is a strong word. <laughs> lie is a strong word, right? But I'm pretty sure she says that without her knowledge or consent, he allowed their argument to be live streamed. And I'm talking about that January 7th. Uh, yeah, the incident, one I was just playing. Allowing the discussion of pending litigation online. But she had actually typed in his chat two times before she started banging on the door. Yes. So is there no like repercussion for just saying whatever? Like, like that's a lie. In family court, there is no repercussion. Uh, in criminal court, there's a thing called perjury. In family court, perjury really doesn't exist. But what she's been doing is trying to ensnare him in the family court system with a violation to find him in contempt. If I can get a million dollars from entrapping you and violating this court order, it's worth it, right? 
Yeah. It's worth it. Just a few weeks after all these court documents came to light, on January 20th, the police were called to XQC's house in Texas. Once again, we have to thank Henry for getting a snippet of the police report and posting it on his YouTube. According to the police report, Sammy and her mother were in XQC's house without his permission. Apparently, Felix told the police that they were stealing his stuff because the reason for the report is a burglary in progress. Sammy told the police that they were married, and Felix told them that they had only been dating for about six months. Back in court, Felix's lawyers were arguing that they were never married. They asked the judge to come to a conclusion about whether they were ever married before trying to split up any of the assets like Adept's lawyers were requesting. The stakes just got notched up higher than ever. If she convinces a judge that they were married, to dig into the finances and his gambling, it's going to hurt him. It's going to hurt sponsors. It's going to be bad. And he'll be, he should just settle, in my opinion. Hey, bust her down for the McLaren, but she knows that if she goes for more, she can get it. At the end of May, XQC had decided to move back into his Texas house. But when he asked a friend to go over and make sure it was ready for him to stream in, what they found was pretty surprising. This is over there? It's fucking, it's dark. There's no power, no water, no internet. In that Okay. Just two days later, a clip from a depth stream went viral. I've been trying to tell the truth for a long time. This is my wedding ring. That's a truthful statement. I didn't purchase it for myself. That's a truthful statement. This wedding ring was purchased on May 8th, I think we said, right? Wasn't that the day of the receipt? And I, I didn't buy it. That's a truthful statement. I've been married for three years. That's a truthful statement. I got a phone call on May 15th. I got a phone call. I didn't call nobody. I didn't beg nobody to call me. Now, it's pretty tempting to write off everything Adept says in this clip because she claims that she's been married for three years as a fact when in reality, she had been fighting in court for seven months to prove it. So it's not exactly a proven fact. But if you stop and think for a second, maybe there are some little hints of truth about what's been going on behind the scenes in what she's saying. And one of those things is the ring. If we consider the possibility that she didn't actually buy it for herself, where did that thing come from? A week later, Felix posted a cryptic video where he shows a tour of his entire Texas house room by room. He doesn't explain why, but the end of the video revealed a lot. I'm getting out. Thank you for helping out. The police were waiting outside the house, along with Sammy and possibly Sammy's mom. But were the police escorting Felix out of his own house? Were they escorting Sammy out of the house? Or something else? The next day on Twitter, fans were speculating about the ring and the reason XQC and Adept were staying in the same house. Felix replied to a tweet and said that cars were going around the house and that he got a call, presumably from Sammy, pleading for him to be there for safety. He says the pictures were taken off his phone while he was asleep. Do you think that that incident where he went there and she was there and they spent the night in the house together. Do you think that like muddied the waters of this whole trial? No, because they're arguing marriage. Just because he went over there to have sex with her, it doesn't mean that they were married. But what happened after that was the whole false allegation of assault. Completely unknown to the public at the time, Adept had called the police and accused Felix of sexual assault. Now, on top of losing half of everything he owned, he was at risk of going to prison and being put on the sex offenders registry. There was also a temporary protective order issued against him, which is something usually only issued against violent or potentially dangerous offenders. Felix could now go to jail just for being around Sammy or saying the wrong thing about the case to the wrong person. Just a couple days after this police report was filed, XQC went to check his mail. There was a uh, letter that demanded an extremely sizable financial settlement, and these things wouldn't get out there. Very sizable uh, amount, and it basically wouldn't happen. I saw that, and in front of me, with, the, with these two things happening, uh, well, I had to make an adult decision. And the adult decision that I made is that I wouldn't budge on any of it, and I wasn't going to buy my way out of anything. I wasn't going to uh, give in to evil, and I wasn't going to just let the waves wash over me. After Felix denied the multi-million dollar settlement demand, Adept and her lawyers kept pushing the court to make the protective order permanent. When going home, the border patrol agent were like, hey man, uh, you have a protective order against you in the state of Texas, what about it? I had to sit there in line at the airport and explain it, and I just, I felt like I was treated like a 
criminal. Felix also revealed that one of the nights they had spent together, he had passed out. And while he was passed out, Adep took his phone and over 700 pictures of text messages, Discord conversations, and all kinds of logs that he had on his phone with other people. Adep started to slowly leak some of these pictures, including one where she claims XQC paid one of his head mods to sleep with him. XQC's response was that he paid her flight and expenses to come visit him and watch him while he was sleeping, since he was still having night terrors and choking in his sleep. Adept went on stream and questioned why Felix couldn't just have a family member do this for him. Oh, if, you, if you're worrying about your health, just, just call your family. Well, I couldn't do that anymore. I wonder why that happened. I wonder at the time why I couldn't call family. I wonder. Well, maybe because um, your ass made a massive drama that split me and my family apart entirely. It's almost like I had nobody at the time. Felix's family, while supportive, were aware that he had a sexual assault case open against him. Nothing's going to cool relations at the family dinner table faster than being under investigation for being a monster. In the heat of the summer while all this was going on, Felix had finally revealed why he says all of this started. I kept waking up and like injuring myself and shit like that, and I felt like I was going to die soon. I felt like I, I wasn't going to live very long. And then I went, got like people, to um, organize everything, like investments and get all my papers in order and get a will. Answer all the questions normally. And then one of them was like, oh, what, what's your like status? And then it's like, well, it's like single, you know? Like, the, the, like if I die, like, okay, well, my will go to like, you know, family like that. And then after that, things just kind of like started like blowing the fuck up. Felix says after this, his relationship with Sammy spiraled out of control, and she filed for a common law divorce against him. He said that ever since the will had been drafted, he had been trying to make as much money as possible so that in the event he dies, his family will be taken care of. To that end, Felix signed a $100 million deal with Kick, and it wasn't even exclusive. He could still stream on Twitch and keep making money over there as well. If he could beat the criminal case and the divorce, he could stack money for his parents and brother. At the end of August, Henry was searching for the SA police report. He knew it was out there and was getting closer. The police denied his request, but their response told him everything he needed to know. It is information and internal records of a law enforcement agency relating to a closed criminal investigation that ended in a result other than a conviction or deferred adjudication. The criminal case against XQC had been dropped. After months of sitting in the dark, I actually had something or somebody tell me and validate that my brain was rooted uh, in reality. Once the criminal case was over, only the massive divorce remained. It was still the largest common law marriage case in history, and an untold amount of money was on the line. The final hearing was supposed to happen very soon, and it was at this point that one of the parties in the case asked for something very strange. Somebody asked for a jury trial. In, uh, uh, Adept did because the lawyer, I mean, she asked for the jury trial because um, the judge was giving her no play. The, I mean, she denied her alimony. She denied uh, lawyer fees. Uh, she did, denied the half a million dollar bond. They're, the judge was not buying for one second that they were married. But because we're in America, we have to go through this judicial system. Even if I say, no, Jabroni hit me and I'm suing him for assault. And here's the lawsuit. And now Jabroni got to get a lawyer and prove that he didn't hit me. You think they could kind of see the writing on the wall and they say, oh, yeah. you know what? 100%. We better get a jury. We're going to get you crying on the witness stand. Like, <laughs> Because think about this. This has been going on since she filed in November of 2022. And from November 2022, at any point in time, she could have requested a jury trial. She wait until literally after the denial of everything right before they're supposed to have their trial between, you know, the trial in front of the judge to request a jury trial. The same judge that was hearing the divorce proceedings had heard the SA case and she didn't like it. XQC was found to be a credible witness and Adept and her legal team could feel that things weren't exactly going their way. Yeah, Look at my lawyer, dog. I'm going to jail. Ground. But if Adept was losing ground in the courts, she was going to make one last ditch effort to win in the court of public opinion. On the night of October 3rd, she went live on Twitch to do just that. Why are they so hard to find? It's because I'm so crazy and I have so many screenshots, over 700. Baby girl, you want to add the numbers up? It's over 15. It's like over 2,000. You guys, you guys act like, like I said, that I'm not in a, a war. You guys act like I'm not at war. 
tons of streamers and content creators tuned into this stream and it pulled over 4,000 concurrent viewers. Like even still, you guys have no idea how truly on and off things were in the last year. I believe you really don't know. He was he was blowing her back out. Adept then spent the rest of the stream reading messages that she had stolen from XQC's phone, picking out the particularly juicy parts in an attempt to make him look as bad as possible. She also leaked several people's real names that weren't public before. She spends a lot of time calling girls that Felix had been messaging and dating over the last year pick me's, and she hints to having more messages that she can release if certain people make her mad. And then somebody at Twitch noticed. See, the reason why I kept playing this song earlier because I. What happened? Let's hit a refresh. Damn! Oh! The next day, XQC posted a video called She Went Too Far and Got Banned. That's where a lot of the clips I've used so far came from. Since he was under orders from the court not to talk about a lot of these things, for a long time he didn't. But now, it was like a massive weight had been lifted from his shoulders. And a lot of evil was shown, and a lot of terrible things were said and done. I sat there, and I was asked that question multiple times. Do you want peace? Or do you want justice? And over and over again, I answered, I want peace. Now, where I'm at, I was asked, do you want peace or justice? I said, I want justice. I want justice now. Then on December 4th, XQC had told his chat that he got a very unexpected text message. I thought, I thought, it, uh, I, I thought I'd never say today, to be honest. Um, but I was on the stream and I got a um, text message. Uh, email and I, I want to uh, take away, take go away from the computer to so call and um, confirm if it was true or not and get, get an explanation. Um, they just gave me the news that I was um, no longer in any um, significant legal battle, and it's uh, all over. After a year in court, it was finally over. The criminal case, the allegations, the leaked messages, the looming dread of not being able to speak about this, and the fear of going to jail or losing his empire, gone. Felix outlived the Overwatch League, survived countless swattings and police raids, and came out on top. And while it wasn't exactly a clean break, with Felix immediately trying to get back with Adept and then admitting he's an idiot, and the car ownership thing is still being worked out, it seems like the whole thing changed Felix in a pretty big way. When this started, he was someone who might have been more willing to settle, buy his way out of hard situations, and just want things to be easy in general. But it seems like this changed him, at least a little bit, into someone who wants justice. And that is one thing money can't buy. Just want to say thanks one more time to Henry Resilient. I couldn't have done this without him. Make sure you check out his channel link in the description. If you like this video, you'll probably like my video I made a while back about the rise of XQC. And as always, thank you so much to my Patreon members and YouTube members who help fund this channel and make these videos possible. I could not do this without you guys, and I'm so very grateful. As always, thanks for watching. Stay weird, internet. See you next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.